Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to start with the Kafka introduction. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us. And we are setting a like target of 500 likes. What is Kafka? Apache Kafka is a published, subscribe, fault tolerant messaging system. It is fast and scalable and distributed by design. In the previous slides, we have seen what is point to point and what is published subscribable models in messaging systems. So Kafka is a published subscribe model while ActiveMQs and RabbitMQs were point to point messaging systems. It was initially thought of as a message queue. It was initially created by LinkedIn in 2011 as an open sourced messaging communication system with multiple publishers, multiple subscribers. But later on, it was found that Kafka is much more to just a messaging system. So in the later years, Apache took over it from the LinkedIn and the community evolved Kafka to provide multiple capabilities. The very first capability remains the same that it is published subscribe model, just like a messaging queue in a messaging system. So it is by default there created by LinkedIn. Later on, it was modified to have the storage systems also so that messages can be consumed asynchronously. Kafka is going to write a data to a disk structure. So there is some storage system available where the data is going to be written and is going to be replicated in multiple brokers and multiple disk areas to be fault tolerant. The third important thing is that a very important modification done to the capability of Kafka is that it was enabled for stream processing with Kafka stream APIs. So multiple APIs were introduced later on in Kafka to be able to do stream processing, which enables complex aggregation and joins of input streams into a particular output stream of processed data. Too much of theory, we will see how Kafka is capable enough to do all those things when we are going to see the architecture of Kafka. Just by going and implementing a project with Kafka is not enough. It's though it seems very easy to just go and implement Kafka and say, okay, I know everything. But when you go to an interview, they'll ask you multiple things. Why it is fault tolerant? Why did you go to Kafka? Why not ActiveMQs, RabbitMQs? How Kafka is different from ActiveMQs, RabbitMQs? And what are the pros and cons you have found while implementing Kafka and moving from Apache MQ and RabbitMQ to Kafka? What, what good and what bad have you seen in your journey? So to implement and answer all those questions in an interview, you should know the basics of Kafka first. The traditional messaging models are queues and published subscribe models. So in queue like ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ, each record goes to only one and only one consumer. So this was producer and this was a consumer. Whatever the producer produces is going to be consumed by exactly one consumer. And as soon as consumer consumes it, the message is deleted from the broker. While in the case of published subscriber, the, all the data is written to some disk storage, basically a storage area. And subscribers or the consumers pulls that data from that particular hard disk, but does not remove it. Why? Because that particular message is not just meant for consumer one, but it is meant for multiple consumers or subscribers who have subscribed to that topic. So the subscriber does not delete that data while reading it, while the consumer deletes the data as soon as it reads it. So that's the very big difference between ActiveMQs and Kafka's. What is the advantage you found while you have moved to Kafka? A very first advantage we have seen while moving from REST API to Kafka is the loose coupling. That means neither services know about each other regarding the data update matter. So basically your producer does not want to know whether the consumer is up and running and how many consumers are there. Producer will just push the data on the topic and will forget about it. While the, it's the task of multiple consumers to consume from the particular topic. Durability guarantees that the message will be delivered even if consumer service is down. So even if your consumer service is down, your data will be stored at that particular disk space from where whenever the consumer gets up and alive, it will fetch or pull the data from there. All the messages will be present in that disk. It will not be deleted. Third, scalability. With Kafka, you have immense scalability and fault tolerance. The messages get stored in a bucket called topic and there is no need to wait for the response to the producer. What it does is it just push the data to that particular topic or the disk memory area 
and forgets about it. It's the task of multiple consumers to consume that from that particular disk space. So this is how you do asynchronous communication. For this flexibility, the sender of the message has no idea who is going to consume it. So your producer does not know how many consumers you have. Meaning you can add any number of consumers without doing anything else. So you can add subscriber 4, 5, 6. Publisher won't even know about how many subscribers you have. It will just publish the data. And these multiple subscribers will pull the data from that particular storage area in the memory. While in the producer consumer, they are very tightly coupled. Each consumer will consume the data from the topic and delete it from there. Now, with great advantages comes great disadvantages also many a times. So, whenever you move to Kafka, you have to make sure that your application really needs Kafka. Now, Kafka seems so easy, right? There is one publisher, multiple subscribers, so easy. But when you go to the architecture, it is this complex. There is a cluster, there are multiple brokers, multiple brokers as a topic, topic as multiple partitions. These are multiple consumers, they are multiple Producers, producers going to produce at particular topic, particular topic in which particular partition it has to decide who is going to handle all these clusters as zookeeper. So it doesn't seem easy, does it? No, it doesn't. So with this particular high level of advantages with Kafka comes a great responsibility, the, the responsibility of developers to understand how these messages actually flow so that if something falls back, you should have a proper approach to handle the failures. Because it is so complex, you should have a particular architectural knowledge before using Kafka. You cannot just go and implement just like you can do an ActiveMQ. Create a producer, create a consumer, great, your life is so easy. No, it's not that easy when it comes to Kafka. If something breaks, you have to understand where the particular message is, why is it breaking, which particular consumer is not able to get the data, where the message is lost, because the chances of you losing the message here in Kafka is really high. So there's a less message visibility. When you comes to consumers, there are multiple consumers. So how will you track all those messages? Where where are they going? With the multiple subscribers, you you can't have the clear visibility on which particular consumer is facing issue in consuming or which particular producer has produced it but not available to consumers. How will you do that? How will you manage all your messages? How will you track your messages or how will you log your messages? So there is something called as correlation IDs which Kafka has given to us to handle such kinds of message visibility problems. It seems difficult, but as soon as you go ahead, understand the technologies, understand the architecture, it will be easy to answer such questions in an interview. If you have implemented Kafka in your project, you should have a very strong base to answer why. Why not ActiveMQs, RabbitMQs? Because for a very small project, ActiveMQs and RabbitMQs are good enough. Why did you took a step ahead and moved to Kafka? So there are multiple reasons. We'll see the comparison and then you will be able to understand for your project, which is better, ActiveMQs, RabbitMQs or the Kafkas. So firstly, who created ActiveMQs? ActiveMQ was created by LogicBase, an open source message brokers. Later, it was donated to Apache Kafka who continue to develop the code base for ActiveMQs. So now ActiveMQs are with Kache. Now RabbitMQs, RabbitMQ is owned by Pivotal Software INC and currently also it's still with them. While in case of Kafka, it was initially designed by and created by LinkedIn. Later in 2011, Kafka was open sourced and the dev and the further development was done by Apache to increase the capabilities of Kafka from not just a topic of producer consumer subscribers, but to have multiple APIs to be able to stream and log your data. So that's currently with Apache now. In which language is it written? Uh, ActiveMQ is written in Java, RabbitMQ is written in ERLang, while Kafka is written with Java and Scala. ActiveMQ is and RabbitMQ is a point-to-point -point messaging system. We have covered that in the previous slide. I'm not going to repeat it. Ka while in the case of Kafka, if it's, it's published subscriber, that means Apache Kafka allows publishing and subscribing to the stream of records. Just to get an overview of ActiveMQs and RabbitMQs in Kafka's, ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ is a traditional messaging system that deals with very small amount of data. So if you have a producer which produces the data in a very small amount, go for ActiveMQs and RabbitMQs. They are point-to-point -point messaging. One or more consumers are connected to the queue while the broker uses round robin to direct message to a specific consumer. So make sure only one consumer is going to consume the data from the queue, not the multiple consumers. There might be a chance that you have multiple consumers, but uh, there will be an if-else condition, whether if the producer has some condition, 
in the message then consumer 1 is going to get the data or other way around consumer 2 is going to get the data but only one and one consumer will get the data from the queue while kafka is a distributed publish subscribe message delivery and logging system remember it was publish subscribe message delivery till it was with linkedin later on its functionality is improvised by apache softwares and it has turned into not just a public subscribe model but also to a logging system which supports streaming of multiple logs in the exact order in which it has produced by a producer and you can log all of them of your logging systems so that follows public subscribe model with message persistence capability so here as soon as your consumer consumes the data your data is removed from the queue so there is no persistence here but it has to persist data in kafka because multiple consumers are going to consume it if first consumer itself deleted the message from the topic others will not be able to read it so there is a message persistence capability and hence storage is available there producer pushes the event stream to broker so producer produces the data to the broker or the topic and consumer pulls the data from the topic so in subscription based messaging brokers broadcast message to all consumers who have subscribed to the topic now when a very important thing when to use active mqtb team queue and when to go for kafka architectural wise so whenever you have exactly one message delivery and you have a very valuable message to be delivered to that particular client go for active mqtb team queue secondly you have very small amount of data to deal with not thousands of logs that you have to stream around in a particular logging system then go for active mqs repeat mqs but when you have a very high performance monitoring system like you have to monitor what logs are there in your system how your how your system is performing is there any kind of log dot error that is being printed on your system then you use kafka and here losing a message is not that important once in a while thousand in a one message can be lost then you can go for kafka but when you have a very valuable message you cannot lose even single message go for active mqs repeat mqs throughput it is a very lower throughput because each delivery message state is maintained active mqs repeat mqs make sure even single message is not lost and the message state is maintained that is why active mq repeat mq is preferred when your message is very valuable while with a very high throughput with kafka because producers don't wait for acknowledgement from brokers at all leave the consumer it doesn't even wait whether the broker has consumed it or not whether the broker has saved it in the memory or not it will just go ahead and do its task in this particular case the message might be lost because producer doesn't wait for broker to save that particular message in memory it just Uh, leaves the message and go ahead with the another task and hence it is very high throughput it is very fast but your message might be lost so broker can write message at a very high rate because it just bombards the broker with multiple messages and forgets about whether the broker is able, able to do its task or not so if your broker fails your message will be lost and hence kafka gives you a multiple redundancy option and that is why here in in this particular cluster you can see multiple brokers these are nothing but the redundant brokers so your data is redundant and hence it is fault tolerant so if your broker dies your second broker is ready to get the data from bombarded from these particular producers order of message active mq rabbit mq cannot assure any order of message to remain same while in kafka it can assure the message retains the order in which they are sent when you run a particular spring boot application you see a console right so whenever you put logs we just go ahead and say log dot info log dot info log dot info you don't think that you are bombarding the server with multiple logs but it's task of kafka to make sure that all the logs are maintained in the exact order in which that has happened if it doesn't happen then you will be in a problem so there can be a case that i have a e-commerce website so you have placed an order the order is received then order is checked in an inventory whether inventory is present or not if it is not there send an error sorry no inventory present now if you do not retain the order it you can see the logs as okay order received inventory sent that there is no inventory present and then you go and check the inventory it will confuse you you will not be able to debug the real issue so that is why order of message is very important in kafka because it is used in logging purpose also in monitoring systems it is used so kafka maintains the surety of order in which they are sent while in reactive mq rabbit mq can get the message anytime anywhere so this is the disadvantage of rabbit mq active mq 
मैसेजिंग टाइप और दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एक्टिव एम क्यूज एंड रेबिट एम क्यूज आर पुश टाइप दैट मीन्स द पब्लिशर्स और द प्रोड्यूसर्स पुश द मैसेज टू द कंज्यूमर वाहिल द काफ का इज अ पुल टाइप दैट मीन्स मल्टीपल सब्सक्राइबर्स पुल मैसेजेस फ्रॉम द ब्रोकर्स एंड दैट इज वाई हु हैज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू एंश्योर द मैसेज डिलीवरी हियर द प्रोड्यूसर और द ब्रोकर हैज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू मेक श्योर दट मैसेज आर डिलीवर्ड एंड हेन्स इट इज अ स्मार्ट ब्रोकर विच मेक श्योर योर डेटा इज रिसीव टू द कंज्यूमर कंज्यूमर इज डम वाई इन केस ऑफ काफ का the it's a task of consumer to consume the message from the topic or the disk area and hence these are smart consumers who are capable to pull the data and they are these are dumb brokers who just keep the data with themselves and will answer whenever you ask them for the particular message so these are the dumb brokers smart consumers these are the dumb consumers smart queues now scalability you don't see any scalability in active enqueue rabbit enqueue there are no horizontal scaling there are no multiple queues to provide you with the replication data but here scalability is available because both the replication of brokers and the replication due to partitions so here you can see the replication of your data so even if your one broker is down another broker will be up minimum 3 redundant brokers are available in your cluster as known the throughput is very high for kafka and hence performance will be high for kafka only so performance is very good and effective even if the new consumers are there because producer don't, don't have to think how many new consumers are there they are completely loosely coupled so the throughput for and performance is 1 million messages can be handled by a kafka topic while in case of active mqs performance is very slow they can handle only 4k to 10k messages per second active mq supports both asynchronous synchronous communication while kafka for sure has to be asynchronous because producers not even wait for brokers to save the data how will it wait for your consumers to consume the data it will not the message retention part i have already told you as soon as your data is consumed by a consumer in queue it will be deleted so these messages are removed from the queue once they are processed and acknowledged by the consumer but in the kafka it is not the case message is retained and will remain forever until there is a time to live that is there is a retention policy so retention policy is 30 days so kafka messages are going to stay in your topic or in the your storage area for 30 days and till then your consumers when wake up any day day 1 day 10 day 15 doesn't matter it will get the data in the topic saved so until your retention time doesn't expire the data will be there developers have no other option kafka is not going giving you any any option to delete it you have only one option to handle the time to live that is the retention policy if you have given the retention policy is 30 days you cannot do anything to remove that data push mechanism is used by active enqueue rabbit enqueue that means they are smart brokers they are constantly trying to deliver the message to consumer and keep the track of their status while the they are dumb consumers they just sit idle and wait for brokers to give them or bombard them with the data so this is push push from queue to consumer consumer sits idle queues push the data to consumers in this direction while this is a pull subscriber pulls the data and hence subscribers or consumers are smart while brokers are dumb so dumb brokers and smart consumers kafka doesn't monitor the message for each subscriber whether they have read or not rather it retains unread messages only preserving all the messages for the set of time it is there payload size there is no constraint for the payload in active mq how much big data it you will send it will be able to get, capture and cater that while the default is 1 mb limit for kafka this is a simple use case where you can use it but when your architecture grows complex and you have very high throughput and massive data you have then you go for kafka so that was a very high level difference between them now we have very important terminologies to be covered in kafka what is topic what is cluster what is producer what is zookeeper and even the architecture of kafka is very important so in the next video we will cover all these high level terminologies and the architecture of kafka in the next video just let me know in the comment section else i'll skip all these terminologies and i'll directly go to the implementation if you want that so you have to let me know in the comment section i have the code ready with me i have these terminologies ready with me if you want to know about these terminologies let me know in the comment section else i'll skip this and i'll directly go to the code base thank you